Some chemical reactions happen very rapidly. Others happen very slowly. Some happen so slowly that we measure them on geological timescales. And some happen so slowly that while the reactions are technically spontaneous, they do not happen at all over the lifetime of the universe. Chemical kinetics is the study of the speed of chemical reactions. But to understand what we mean by that statement, we need to think a bit about what we mean by speed. In normal physics, when we talk about speed or velocity, we mean the change in position with respect to time. If we are dealing with a constant velocity, this expression works well. But if the velocity is changing, we need to use the derivative version. So when we talk about the rate of a chemical reaction, we have to ask ourselves, what is the analog to position? In this example, where we are dealing with solutes, the analog is concentration. Remember our notation that square brackets around a substance means the concentration in units of molarity. What is happening here is that as the reaction progresses, the reactant concentrations go down while the product concentrations go up. And so just like a velocity is the slope of a position curve, the rate of reaction is the slope of a concentration curve. One problem with this notion is that we have different slopes for the same reaction depending on which species we look at. For example, the reactants have negative slopes and the products have positive slopes. Yet despite that, we would like to be able to talk about the rate of the reaction rather than the rate of a particular species. Let's explore this issue on a slightly more complicated reaction so we can really explore it. Here we have a reaction with three different reactants and three different products, each with a different stoichiometric coefficient. Let's think about how we can define a rate of reaction that will work regardless of which species we are looking at. Let's start with the products. Notice that for every one time the reaction runs as written, you get five ions of sulfate and two ions of manganese. So if we define the rate of reaction as the number of times the reaction as written runs, then we need to divide the rate of sulfate production by five and the rate of manganese production by two. And because of the reaction stoichiometry, both of these measures will give you the same rate of reaction. Now let's take a look at the products. We definitely want to do something similar with the stoichiometric coefficients, but we also need to think about sign. If the reaction is happening, we would like the rate to be defined as a positive number. And the product concentrations are increasing, so this works fine. But the reactant concentrations are decreasing, meaning that their slopes are negative. Therefore, to make the rate of reaction positive, we have to include a negative sign. Once we do that, again because of stoichiometry, all of these measures of concentration give you the same rate of reaction. Most reactions require the reactants to be mobile so that they can encounter each other to allow them to react with each other. This is why we have focused on solution phase reactions so far, because the solute molecules can float around and run into each other. But gas molecules are also mobile, so let's look at an example of a gas phase reaction. Here we have all reactants and products in the gas phase. We would like to be able to express the rate of reaction in such a case in a similar way to what we did for solutions but concentration is not quite as natural a unit for gases. Let's start to explore this problem by looking at the ideal gas law. Now think back a moment to concentration. How is molarity defined? Moles of solute over liters of solution. So let's solve the ideal gas law for moles over volume. Our left-hand side is now a concentration. And since we normally carry out a reaction at constant temperature, the right-hand side is just a proportionality constant times the partial pressure of the gas in question. So let us write our rates of reaction now in two ways. First, in terms of concentrations, just like we did for solutions, and second, in terms of partial pressures. This way, the two rates are related just by that same proportionality constant. This means that we can develop all of our understanding of chemical kinetics using concentrations, and that understanding will directly apply to chemical kinetics using partial pressures. Generally, for a given problem, everything will be given in terms of just one or the other, so you will never need to convert between the two. Simply knowing that the ideas we will be talking about in one context apply to the other is pretty much all you need to know about that connection.